Hello and welcome to the introduction to algebra. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you um, uh, two scriptures. Uh, the first <laughs> is actually written in a different language. Uh, this is 1st Nephi chapter 1 verse 1 and uh, I have it here in Spanish and also in English. I do this uh, for an important reason about what we're going to be doing, uh, dealing with here in math today. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Uh, it is, uh, my Spanish isn't that great, but uh, I'll give it a try. Yo, Nefi, nací de buenos padres, y recibí, por tanto, alguna instrucción en toda la ciencia de mi padre, y habiendo conocido muchas aflicciones durante el curso de mi vida, siendo, no obstante, altamente favorecido del Señor todos mis días, sí, habiendo logrado un conocimiento grande de la bondad y los misterios de Dios. Escribo, por tanto, la historia de los hechos de mi vida. Now, it's interesting, as you look at this and look down at the English, there's probably some words that you, you recognize, you can pick out. You can be like, uh, for example, Nephi, except it's spelt different, of course. Um, padres, uh, that's, that's parents, that's kind of close. Um, what are some other ones here? We can look at aflicciones, that's afflictions. And uh, what else? Vida means life. Maybe you've heard of that, or, or days. Maybe you've heard of that one before. <clears throat> or even God. God in Spanish is Dios. Historia is record. Anyway, when we go from one language to another, we often call that translating. Translating. Um, we know that Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon um, from the from the gold plates to uh, to English, and then we also uh, have translated that into other languages. Uh, there's like over 200 languages that the Book of Mormon's been translated into. Translating is really important. And I bring this up because today's lesson, today's math lesson, is going to be about translating. Uh, a lot of people call math a, uh, a foreign language, and it is. It's different than English, um, and it has its own translation. And so we have to be able to convert from English to to math. Uh, we got to be able to take a, a math a, a math sentence and be able to turn it into an equation. That's going to be our goal today. And so. Uh, when we, we're going to get started, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the translations, some of these words that we have to know. Let's get started. So let's discuss uh, this idea of translating. There's uh, some terms here that we want to uh, talk about. And um, the first one are all of the translation words for uh, addition. So we've got addition here, and uh, a list of all the words that mean addition. So we've got uh, sum. Sum is a, a translated word to mean addition. We have more. We have plus, <clears throat> increased by, and added to. All of these words mean addition. So for example, if we were given uh, the statement, nine more than some number. So nine more than some number. How would you translate that into math? Well, we would take some number, uh, I use the letter x to represent that some number, and then do 9 more, x plus 9, because more means addition. So let's take a look at uh, some of the other translated words that we're going to need to know uh, for this lesson. We have subtraction, which uh, can also translate into difference, less, less than, and that one's highlighted because we're going to talk about it, minus decreased by or fewer than. So all of these words translate into subtraction. And we should be ready to see those and uh, use a subtraction whenever we're told to. For example, if we said some number decreased by 13. So some number decreased by 13. Now this, uh, if I said translate this into math, you would take some number, and you can pick any variable here. We're going to go ahead and use the variable n on this one, just for fun. Some number decreased by 13. Well, decrease by means subtraction. So we would say n minus 13. OK, so uh, like I said, we highlighted the word less than. Because less than is uh, one of those unique uh, ones that is actually translated backwards. Um, the word less than, it's kind of like in Spanish. We say 
uh, instead of saying white house, we say house white, la casa blanca. Um, when we use the word less than, it is also going to have a backwards translation. So if I would have said five less than some number, five less than some number, how would you translate this? Five less than some number. Um, a lot of people would want to directly translate this and put five minus x. This is not right. Don't do this. Five less than some number translates backwards when doing mathematics. You need to write x minus five. Basically, you're, you, you've got some number, and you're going to do five less than that. That's another way of thinking of it. So when you see 5 less than some number, remember to write x minus 5. OK, so let's work with uh, multiplication. Here's the words for multiplication. Uh, we have the words product. That means to multiply. We have times, which means to also multiply, multiplied by, and of. All of these four words are the translations for um, our math terms for multiplication. So if we were given the problem, for example, um, 3 times a number increased by 7. How would we write this or translate it into a math equation? Well, we would just do 3 times a number, which would be 3n, increased by, remember that's our uh, word for addition, and so we would put plus 3n plus 7. We also use uh, the word of. Notice of is there for, um, for multiplication. Of is often used for um, percents. For example, if I would have said, hey, what is 10% of your salary? Okay, 10% of your salary uh, of means multiplication. And we often do this problem for paying tithing. This is just an example. And so 10% of S, now we don't usually like to leave percents in a math equation. When translating percents to math, we always write them as decimals. So we're going to move the decimal place over two spots here, and we're going to write this as 0.10s, or you can simply write it as 0.1s. Remember that when doing percents in a math equation, when we translate those, we'd like to convert them to decimals. OK, and the last one that we want to look at, the last code words here uh, are for division. The words are quotient, divided by, the ratio of, and also per, uh, like 60 seconds per minute. Um, we use division for those. So these are our code words, um, our translating words that we use when wanting to convert things from words to math equations. Let's have you guys do some practice problems. OK, so here are one, two, three, four, five problems. We'd like you to take out your notebook, write down these five problems, and then translate them into their math equations. The first one is 75% of some number. The next one, 6 more than 4 times some number. The next one, 5 less than twice some number. The one after that here in blue is the sum of 4 times a number plus 3 times another number. And the last one is 12 decreased by the product of 8 and some number. The of got cut off there, but that's of 8 and some number. OK, pause the video. Good luck. And push the play button when you're ready to resume. OK, so let's take a look at these answers here. Make sure that you're good at translating. First one is 75% of some number. Uh, so 75%, this of means multiplication. So uh, it would be 75% of some number. I'm going to use the number x. Although we need to also translate the percent to uh, a decimal. And so you should have written that the, num the answer is 0.75x. OK, let's try 6 more. Well, more means plus. Then 4 times, that's multiplication and some number. I'm going to go ahead and use x again. So 6 more means 6 plus, And 4 times some number would be 4n. That's what you should have got for the second one. 
Here we have five less. Ooh, less than, less than. That's the one of those that you got to write backwards. Five less than twice some number. So we're going to have twice some number, and we need to do less than five. Five less than twice some number should have been the answer for this third one. Remember, less than translates backwards, like in Spanish. The sum of four times a number plus three times another number, so sum of four times a number, well, that's four times a number, plus three times another number, so three, and I'm, it's a different number, so I'm going to use a different letter there. I went ahead and used N and M, but you could have used either numbers on that. Okay. 12 decreased, well, decrease means subtraction by the product, ooh, that's multiplication, of 8 and some number. So 12 is being decreased by 8 and some number. So those are the translations you should have got for those five problems. How'd you do? Hopefully well. There's one last thing we want to talk about here in this lesson. Let me clear the board and we'll get to it. Before we get started, I want to share with you an excerpt from a talk given by President Irene uh, at a CES fireside. The talk was titled, Gifts of the Spirit for Hard Times. And uh, ironically, in this talk, he, he talks about formulas and equations. And since that's what we're going to talk about today, I thought it would be a good idea to share this with you. I'd like you to pay close attention to how he says the spirit uh, can affect education and uh, affect your learning um, and how that can, impacted his life and how it can impact yours as well. So let's take a listen to uh, this small excerpt from the talk. For instance, consi consider yourself in the eve of a school examination, which will be coming soon, by the way, or an interview for a new job. You know that the direction of the Holy Ghost could be of great help. I know from my own experience, for example, that the Holy Ghost knows some of the mathematical equations used to solve problems in thermodynamics, a branch of the sciences. I was a struggling physics student studying in a book which I still own. I keep it for historic and spiritual reasons. Halfway down a page, I could even show you where it is on the page, in the middle of some mathematics, I had a clear confirmation that what I was reading was true. It was exactly the feeling I had had before come to me as I pondered the Lord's scriptures, particularly the Book of Mormon, that I had had many times since. So I knew that the Holy Ghost understood whatever was true and what I might be asked on an, on an examination in thermodynamics. You can imagine that I was tempted to ask God to send me the Holy Ghost during the examination so I wouldn't need to study further. I knew that he could do it, but I did not ask him. I felt that he would rather have me learn to pay a price in effort. He may well have sent some help in the examination, but I was afraid that my motive might not be his. You have had that same choice to make often. It may have been when you were to be interviewed for a job. It may have even been when you were preparing for a talk or to teach a missionary discussion. Always, there is the possibility that you may have a selfish purpose for yourself that is less important to the Lord. For instance, I may want a good grade in a course when he prefers that I learn how to work hard in the service of others. I may want a job because of the salary or the prestige when he wants me to work somewhere else to bless the life of someone I don't even know yet. He surely will have purposes for your hearing me speak tonight. He knows you. I might have a desire to entertain or impress you, but I've tried to suppress my desire and surrender to his. Well, I just want to testify uh, to the things that he said. Um, I want to testify that I know that the Spirit um, is is uh, will testify of the truth. And I also want to testify that that I know um, that it's not just about us. Education isn't about us. I love how he said, you may want to get a good grade in a course, and, and we are hoping that you're getting a good grade in the course, but it's not just about that. Uh, we also have the opportunity to serve others, help others, and that may be the true purpose of the Lord, uh, having us here in this class, knowing one another. 
So I hope that you remember that and pay attention to that as you go out, go throughout the, the school year and your time here at BYU-Idaho. And remember that, that there's other reasons, other things, and, and Heavenly Father will testify of those things. Um, I also love how he said uh, he was going to pray for uh, to, so that he didn't have to study. That's not a good thing to pray for, and as he, uh, as he stated. Um, there's, there is a, a price uh, in the effort. I love how he said that. There's a price in the effort of what we have to do. Um, okay, well, with that in mind, let's get to the formulas that uh, we're discussing today. So here's a formula. Maybe it's one that uh, President Eyring had to uh, discuss in thermodynamics. I'm not sure. Uh, but this is a famous Einstein formula. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Uh, C stands for speed of light. Many times when dealing with formulas, we're given a formula and it's solved for a certain variable. Notice that this one is solved for energy. The variable E is by itself. But many times in mathematics, we don't want, we, we, we sometimes want to be able to solve for other variables to know what they would equal in representation of the equation. So, so what if I were to say, hey, I don't want this solved for E. I mean, I know E equals MC squared. That's all fine and dandy. But what if we didn't want to solve it for E? Instead, we want to solve it for M. So again, we could apply the law of opposites in helping us solve formulas for different variables. I know that E is times c squared. So what's the opposite of times by c squared? Well, you bet. It would just be to divide by c squared. So we could divide both sides by c squared. And that would leave us now with m by itself. And we know that m equals e over c squared. We can do this with any formula. We can solve for different variables uh, in the formula. Let's look at the perimeter formula. Perimeter equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. This would be for a uh, perimeter of a rectangle. And uh, we've got to solve for perimeter. That's uh, fine and dandy. But what if we needed to uh, use a program? Often in Excel, you have to solve it for a certain variable. What if I wanted to solve for w, get w by itself? Well, again, we'd use law of opposition. We'd have to get rid of this plus 2l. And to undo plus 2l, we would subtract 2l to both sides, minus 2l and minus 2l. So I get perimeter minus 2L equals 2W. Now we're almost there. We almost have W by itself, but we have to do one more thing. We have to undo this times by 2. And so to undo times by 2 would be to divide by 2. And so our answer would be perimeter minus 2 times length divided by 2 equals W. Again, we can use the law of opposition to solve formulas uh, for different variables. Okay, so we've written uh, on the board three problems here, number one, two, and three. And what we'd like you to do is pause the video, take out your video notebook, and work on solving these three equations for the variable that it uh, asks for. So in number one, you need to solve for x, get x by itself. In number two, notice that the equation is written for d, we want you to solve it for r, get r by itself. And in number three, we want you to solve it for y, get y by itself. Pause the video and push play when you're ready to resume. Okay, let's take a look on number one. Uh, you should have done uh, the, the law of opposites. So the opposite of plus 13 would be minus 13 to both sides. So when you minus 13 to both sides, you get y minus 13, and that would equal x. And notice that now we have x by itself. And so that would simply be our answer, x equals y minus 13. On the next one here, we want to get r by itself. So we need to undo this t. So uh, it's being multiplied. The opposite of multiplication by t would be to divide both sides by t. We could divide both sides by t. And we would end up getting r equals d over t. That would be the answer for that one. On number three, we want to get y by itself. That's our goal. And so to get y by itself, we're going to need to uh, take care of this 8x. So minus 8x to both sides. And I get 2y equals 10 minus 8x. OK, looking good here. Now we just need to get rid of this 2. It's being multiplied. So to undo divide by 2, we could, I mean multiply by 2, we would divide by 2 to both sides. And we get y, let's see, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 8 divided by 2 is 4x. That would be our answer for that one. Oh. 
we just want to look at one more type of problem, and this is one that would involve fractions. Uh, so for example, uh, the area of a triangle we know is 1 half base times height. Uh, to eliminate fractions, you can just multiply by the denominator, multiply both sides by the denominator. So notice here we have a 2. If you multiply both sides by 2, so we times this side by 2, times this side by 2, we get 2a equals b times h. And again, if we're solving for h, we would just divide by b, and our final answer would be 2a over b equals h. So that's the area formula of a triangle solved for the height. Let's look at one more ex of those examples. What if we had x plus y plus 2z over 5 equals 10. So in a problem like this, again, we'd want to eliminate the fraction. And to eliminate the fraction, you can multiply both sides by the denominator. So to undo the divide by 5, we would multiply both sides by 5. In doing that, we'd be left with x plus y plus 2z equals 10 times 5, which is 50. Again, we're trying to get x by itself, so we would just subtract all that over. We get x equals 50 minus y minus 2z. So we would subtract the y to both sides, subtract the 2z to both sides to get that answer. OK, let's uh, give you guys two more problems to work on here. OK, so on these problems here, here's number 4 and number 5. On number 4, you need to get p by itself, solve for p. And on number 5, you need to get c by itself to solve for c. Go ahead and pause the video. Give these a try in your video notebook. When you're ready to check your answer, go ahead and push the play button again. OK, so on this problem here, on this uh, number 4, uh, we would want to get rid of the fraction. Uh, get rid of this divide by 2. To undo divide by 2, we use the law of opposites and multiply both sides by 2. That gets us 2q equals, again, these would cancel out because we they're, they're opposites, equals p minus q. Again, we're trying to get p by itself, so I need to undo the minus q. The opposite of minus q would be to add q. And that would be our final answer for p. p equals 2q plus little q. Oh, there's a big q and a little q. OK, on number 5, you have to solve for c. We need to get c by itself. So we've got to undo this fraction, undo the divide by 3. The opposite of divide by 3, of course, is multiply by 3. So we get 3a equals a plus b plus c. We then need to get the a plus and the plus a and the plus b over to the other side, so we subtract. And we get 3 big A minus little a minus b equals c. OK, well, that's it for this lesson. Uh, good, uh, good work. If you need to review anything, feel free to uh, scroll through the video and review uh, the topics that you need to work on. Um, and when you're ready, press the Start button at the bottom, and you can uh, uh, begin and complete the assignment. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.